Hi and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. It's time once again to share with you all my great doll finds from the past month. I've already done one video of the stuff I got in box lots at the Withington auction, so this video will cover everything else I picked up from auctions, flea markets, and a doll show. Let's jump right in. I got several vintage celebrity dolls this month. Baby Sandy, whose full name was Sandra Lee Henville, was a child star who appeared in several movies from 1939 to 1942. She was supposed to be Universal's answer to Shirley Temple, but she never quite matched Shirley's star power. She's all composition and was made by Frundlich. For some reason, she's dressed as a boy in this leather lederhosen outfit. Maybe she played a boy in one of her movies, I'm not sure. But I've seen this outfit on a few other dolls, so I think it must be original. Baby Sandy was also made with bent baby legs as well as this straight-legged toddler version. This Brandy doll was made by Mattel in 1999. It's a very good likeness of the singer who sold a ton of records in the 1990s and then went on to star in her own sitcom on TV. I don't think this is an original outfit. It might be a Barbie thing. Jimmy Nelson was a popular ventriloquist from the 1940s into the 1960s. This is a toy version of his famous dummy, Danny O'Day. As with many of the vintage pull string ventriloquist dolls, his mouth no longer opens and closes. This is because it's attached to a rubber band and the rubber disintegrates over time. I'm going to try fixing him because he'll sell for a better price if he actually works. His original tag is attached to the front of his jacket says Jimmy Nelson's Danny O'Day. Here's a couple of Gone with the Wind dolls made by World Dolls in the 1980s. This is Mammy, played by Hattie McDaniel. She was the first African-American entertainer to win an Oscar. And this is Ashley Wilkes, played by Leslie Howard. He's missing his hat, unfortunately. Talking Dorothy is a Barbie doll made in 1999. She's missing her basket and Toto, but she still talks when you press the button in her back. Anymore. And her ruby slippers light up. There's no place like home. Pretty cool, huh? I was happy to get this cloth Harriet Beecher Stowe doll from my New England Dolls collection. She was made by Hallmark as part of a series to go along with the state quarters, but they didn't make all 50 states. I think they stopped after the first year or so. She's the Connecticut doll. There's a plastic holder for the quarters on one side of the box, and the inside is printed to look like the inside of a room. The K-Stan Miss America pageant dolls were made in the late 60s and early 70s. They also made a Miss Teenage America pageant doll. These dolls were made using the molds that Remco designed for the Little Chap family, at least the body molds, but they were made in the likenesses of actual pageant winners, I, and I think this one is meant to resemble Phyllis George, who was Miss America in 1971. She went on to have a career as a sportscaster, newscaster, and talk show host on TV. These dolls are hard to find. I saved the best celebrity doll for the last. This is the composition Deanna Durbin doll made by Ideal. She was a talented singer and movie star of the 1930s and 40s. This appears to be a homemade dress, but is well done and very appropriate, although it's a little low cut. The best thing is her amazing shoes. Check them out. These are a few advertising dolls I picked up this month. This, of course, is a Ronald McDonald doll. He's an early one from the 70s. And he has his arch nemesis, the Hamburglar, with him as well. He's got his original cape, too. And this is a Burger King doll from the same era, before he was creepy. But now I have a really, really cool advertising doll for you. Check out this amazing, minty American character Tony doll. Of course, she was advertising the Tony Home Permanence. I was so, so excited to get this doll at an auction. She was wrapped in tissue paper and stuffed into a plastic garment bag with, with a bunch of cloth dolls and stuffed animals. All I could see in the picture on the website was a Raggedy Ann doll, so I went to the auction hoping to get that, so you can imagine how excited I was when I started pulling things out of the bag at the auction preview and found her. I quickly wrapped her back up again and buried her at the bottom. She has beautiful dark brunette hair with all the hairpins still in it and her original stretch lace teddy. I'm not sure about this robe. I haven't seen it before, so it may not be original, but she's obviously been wearing it for 60 years, so she'll keep wearing it. 
If you recognize it, please leave me a comment and let me know. This wooden playpen will be great for displaying dolls at the doll show. I got some vintage stuffed animals in nice clean condition at an auction. This one is shaped like a traditional teddy bear but has the coloring of a tiger. He's tagged Pixie Trademark by Mizba Toy and Novelty Company. This tiger is more cat-like. He was made by Gund. You can see the tag here. Here's a little leopard. His fur is very shiny. He has a tiny Made in Japan tag. This is a totally different leopard made of velveteen. I don't know if he's one of the dream pets that were very collectible in the 50s and 60s or if he's a knockoff. Got a couple of other velveteen animals too. This tiny one is maybe a donkey. The ribbons were apparently added later. This bulldog has a pipe in his mouth and a couple of very sharp wooden teeth. I found a note that was enclosed with him. It reads, Hello, souls. This is Claude Eustace. Treat him kindly and feed him Wrigley's. And has a little stick figure at the bottom. <laughs> Pretty strange. I didn't get too much in the way of doll clothes myth this month, but I did pick up a few things. This mod era Barbie outfit is called Zocco. It's in really good condition, still nice and shiny. And it's complete with the boots and even the earrings, which are hard to find. Got a few miscellaneous accessories for vintage Barbie outfits, too, also at the doll show. Um, the, the fuzzy scale alarm clock and these um, little orange drinks. I think they're from Friday Night Date. These Tammy pajamas came on a baby doll that was in an auction box lot. And this tagged Sisette nightgown was on a doll that I picked up at a doll club meeting. I got this robe with it also, but I don't think this is Sisette's. Let me know if you know who this belongs to. Here's a few handmade cloth dolls I want to show you. The older couple in black were made by Maine artist Betty Curtis. She was one of the early members of NIATA, the National Institute of American Doll Artists. She made her own paper mache by boiling tissue paper and forming it into the doll's heads and then covering them with cloth and pa painting them. They have glass eyes and are posable with individual fingers. Their outfits are very detailed. She also wrote stories with the dolls acting as characters in the stories. I think these two might be Al and Parthine Cunningham from the story Parlor Meeting. Here's another cloth doll portraying a lady from an earlier time. Her features are drawn in ink. She's not tagged or marked in any way. This cloth doll is made of stockinette. She originally had a blue skirt and red hat made of silk ribbon which have almost completely deteriorated. I call her Miss Liberty. She may date from the World War I era. And this little guy is possibly a soldier or a policeman. What do you think? I got this cool doll's fainting couch at an auction. Um, be nice for dolls to sit on, but if I turn it on side, it also is good to lean dolls up against. This was the doll I saw in the auction photo, a Georgine Raggedy Ann. She has her original hang tag with a 1951 date.
I believe the Raggedy Andy is also Georgine from the same time period, because their faces are identical, but he has no hang tag and his body tag has been cut off too. This wonderful doll is by Georgine and is obviously meant to be Hawaii. She wears her all original outfit. She's got her polka dotted bikini on under her grass skirt. And if you look at her back, you can see she's stitched by hand up the back. This is how you can identify Georgine dolls from other similar mask face dolls. Here are some Nora Wellings dolls. They were also in the garment bag with the stuffed animals and the raggedies and the American character Tony. They're tagged on the bottom of the foot. These two are palace guards. I think this one is from the series of dolls she made representing different cultures from around the world. Does anybody know what country she represents? Here's a couple of tiny cloth dolls, Asian and African. They were made in Japan. They have loops on the back, so I think maybe they were meant to be Christmas tree ornaments. These are flag dolls. They're vinyl with a uh, wire armature for posing. I think this is meant to be a square dance lady. I knew they were vintage and collectible when I got them, but what I didn't know at the time was that they were made in Massachusetts. So I bought them planning to resell them, but now I'm going to keep some of them anyway. This, some of them are dollhouse dolls. Here's a little dollhouse girl. And here's a little um, baby boy and girl with uh, blue shoes and pink shoes. This guy has quite a bit of wear to his paint. Some of them appear to be redressed. Anyway, it's an interesting lot. Puppets. I normally stay away from puppets because they're hard to sell, but these were so cute I couldn't resist. Look at this face. This pink rabbit is very sweet. This one is tagged Billy the Lucky Pup and was made by Knickerbocker. And here's a brown bear. And a little tiger. Got a few dolls from around the world this month. This doll was made in the Soviet Union. Sorry about the glare on her box, but I couldn't get her out. Check out her cool tricolor hair. And the label on the bottom. This little doll is from Japan. These two mask face dolls were made in Poland. This old cottage toys doll was made in England. She has her original dress, which I had to wash because it was so grubby. Got her at the flea market. I think she's meant to be a bridesmaid. She probably originally had a hat and bouquet. Here's a few fashion dolls from the 50s, little Miss Revlon types. This brunette doll is marked with a P in a circle. She's wearing a horseman Cindy dress. And this is Miss Nancy Ann, made by the same company that made the little storybook dolls. Her dress is handmade, but very nice. And this is You Need a Tiny Teen. Her face and hair look pretty good, but her body is badly damaged. It's all chewed up. I'll hold on to her and see if I can find a better body for her.
Here's a 70s fashion doll. This is Tiffany Taylor, made by Ideal. I have the white version, but this black version is one I've been wanting for years, since I started collecting back in the 90s. And look how minty her hair is, still on the original rollers. If you're not familiar with her, she has two-tone hair and her scalp rotates, so she can have either black hair or red hair. The white doll's hair is blonde and brunette. This is not an original outfit, but it suits her very well and matches her original lime green shoes. I love, love, love her. And finally, a few odds and ends. This black Ginny doll is a reproduction of a 1950s one. She was a luncheon souvenir from a UFDC regional held in New Hampshire in 2011. This vintage Ginny type doll was made by Virga. I gotta find her something to wear. She's a walker. And this is a mini thirsty baby made by Horseman in the late 60s. Just adorable. Her eyes do not open and close. They're stationary. Last but not least, these Dawn clones were made by Wilton to use with a mini cake pan they made. So the cake part becomes the skirt and then you decorate the whole thing with frosting to make an outfit. They still make these dolls, but they don't look like Dawns anymore. These early ones are obvious copycats. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate all of you who watch my videos. Leave me a comment and let me know what you found in the month of April. I'm looking forward to May because that's really the beginning of yard sale season here in Maine. Happy hunting and see you next time.